Hey, remember when I made that video on the X Factors for the Western Conference? Or I guess many of you don't remember because the video didn't do particularly well. Uh, but I was going to do a part two, uh, and then it's been like well over two weeks. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm finally doing it now. Uh, this video is going to be the X Factors of the Eastern Conference. And for those who are not aware, I believe the X Factor to be a player that can really go either way. And that player, because they could go either way, it really determines the success of the team. This is generally someone who is not necessarily reliable, someone who can on one night be a really good player for you, and on another night, not so much. And, you know, the degree in which that is the case depends case by case. Not every team has a player who's dramatically an X Factor. Some do, some don't. But we're going down the Eastern Conference standings. Uh, if you end up enjoying this video, please be sure to subscribe uh, and drop a like on the video to help it do better in the YouTube algorithm. I'm going to try and be back and be more consistent, but I've said that 15 times now and it hasn't worked. And I've said that I've said it 15 times now and it hasn't worked. So whatever. We'll, maybe I'll be consistent, maybe I won't. We'll find out. Probably not. That's what the precedent says. So... Starting out with the Miami Heat, I think the easiest X Factor maybe this entire video, Victor Oladipo. If Victor Oladipo comes in the next season and kicks ass and he's as good as he was in last year's playoffs, if not better, then that means the world for the Miami Heat. Like, he had so many good games, especially in that Atlanta Hawks series, and if he could be 80% of what he was at his peak in Indiana, then... The Miami Heat are a scary basketball team because I really feel like they're going to give him that opportunity to fully establish himself as like a star lead ball handler again. And if he is able to take on that load offensively, pause, I think, uh, that would be huge on top of what he brings to the table as a defensive player, as if the Miami Heat weren't already unfair enough defensively. Add Victor Oladipo being at his peak defensively again. Yeah, uh, Miami Heat, very, very good team if Victor Oladipo bounces back. Um, for the Boston Celtics, uh, that's a difficult one. I, I guess I gotta go Marcus Smart because he can be the reason you won and the reason you lost depending on the night. I think that's a fairly easy pick. We can move on from that. For the Milwaukee Bucks, um, uh, that's a difficult one. I don't know that there's a strong candidate for this. Uh... I guess you could say, like, Bobby Portis or something. I don't know. Like, maybe Drew Holiday because he's really bad in the playoffs, generally speaking, at least scoring the ball. I don't know. That's, that's not a solid pick there. For the Sixers, um, I kind of want to go James Harden because he can be that inconsistent, and I think I might. Uh, just because, like, look, James Harden is still good, but he has nights where he's awful and has his nights where he's still a 20 and 10 guy. So depending on what version of him you're getting is huge. Like I believe he averaged 18 points in the playoffs. If he's going to be on a downswing like that, uh, that's going to be problematic for the team's success. Uh, for the Toronto Raptors, I guess I got to go Gary Trent Jr. just because he's the most hit or miss guy. Uh, of that entire roster. I guess you could say Scotty Barnes for like if he takes a huge leap that would make them a much better team. My doorbell just rang. I don't know if you could hear that. Uh, food being delivered so they're just going to leave it at the door. I don't need to answer it. Um, yeah. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. I think he's the, he's the most... Um, if there's any player on the team who you could label as a shot chucker, it would be Gary Trent, even though I don't think that's necessarily a fair label for him. But it is, he's definitely the guy who could just have a 0 for 10 game randomly. Um, for the Chicago Bulls, uh, well, I guess Patrick Williams, yeah. Because I think this is going to be the year where the Bulls finally actually embrace Patrick Williams as a key part of the offensive system. I think he's going to be getting a lot of cut action, uh, a lot of open threes, uh, stuff of that nature. And I do think he actually has you know, the potential to solidly work within that offensive system. 
uh, especially if they just design enough plays for him because he's a big forward who's smart off ball and there's a lot of talented playmakers on the Bulls roster when everybody's healthy. Like you got to think if he's on the floor with Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine who's a fine enough passer, DeMar DeRozan who's a really good passer, and Nikola Vucevic who's a really good passing big man. Like there's plenty of opportunity to just feast just by simply existing out there as a large forward, as a good finisher, as a good cutter, as a guy who has shot well from three, even though the volume has been low, as someone who's really good at attacking a closeout. I do think there's real opportunity for Patrick if he stays aggressive and the system around him is built for him to thrive. Um, and I think they're going to finally embrace him doing that because at this point, going into year three, even though he missed most of year two, like... It's time to move on from prospect talk and like, what can you actually do for me now? Especially as the Bulls are trying to win right now. I talked way too much about Patrick Williams, but whatever. I'm a Bulls fan. I'm allowed to do it. Guy had two 20-point games in the playoffs, so worthy of note. Also played respectable defense on Giannis. Number seven in the conference standings was the Brooklyn Nets. I don't know why I felt the need to list that out, but the Brooklyn Nets, I guess, uh... Joe Harris or Kyrie Irving showing up to his job? Uh, I think Kyrie is actually going to show up this year because he's in a contract year, so I don't think that's it. I guess Joe Harris or Ben Simmons maybe? How well Ben Simmons fits, how well he's capable of playing center because that's something they're going to experiment with. I guess Ben Simmons is a better answer there, yeah, for sure. Um, for the Atlanta Hawks, um, is it... I guess it would have to be DeAndre Hunter or Onyeka Okongwu. More likely DeAndre Hunter because, like, if Onyeka Okongwu breaks out and he ends up being really good, then that is not as beneficial as if DeAndre Hunter does because DeAndre plays small forward and Onyeka is a center. So if he's great, then it's just like, okay, do we trade Clint Capella? Maybe you're able to then trade Clint Capella for a really good starting wing and then in that way him breaking out still helped you. But either way, uh, it would be better for DeAndre Hunter because he's a really good 3 and D wing when he's healthy. And if he could be like a 16-point-per-game guy, create his offense a little bit, hit his open threes, uh, and just be a really, really good large wing defender, then, yeah, that's a really good... Uh, that would be really huge for the Hawks, especially being that they have DeJounte Murray defensively now. Clint Capella at one point, not so much last year, but the year before, basically anchored the defense single-handedly. Like, he was the only reason they weren't one of the worst defenses in the league. So, DeJounte... Clint Capella uh, and DeAndre Hunter in the starting lineup all playing consistently. John Collins is a pretty middle-of-the-pack defensive player. And Trey Young is maybe the biggest defensive liability in basketball. But if you have those three elite defenders, one pretty alright one, and then a terrible one in the starting lineup, I think you can end up having a pretty good defense. And again, if DeAndre Hunter ends up having that creating ability that he's displayed, if he ends up having... Uh, just the overall well-rounded offense that he is capable of having, then that would be really, really huge for the Atlanta Hawks. So if this this would be the right year for DeAndre Hunter to break out. Uh, for the Cleveland Cavaliers, this one is easy. Isaac Okoro. If Isaac hits his threes... Like, I, I think the difference between whether or not the Cavs are contenders is if Isaac is hitting his threes. If Isaac shoots 37% on five attempts from three, or even four attempts... That means a world of difference for this Cavaliers team. Now, I realize in the back half of last season, he shot 40% from three. But it was on two attempts per game. That volume scares me. That volume is too low for me to find that to be a legitimate 40% three-point shooter, to say the least. So, uh, if he can be that kind of shooter, the defense they'd be able to put on the floor while not sacrificing spacing too much... Holy fucking shit. Because, like, the small forward spot is the one thing to debate right now with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like, do you go with Karis LeVert? Do you go with uh, Isaac Okoro? Or do you trade for somebody because neither of those options are necessarily ideal? If Isaac Okoro hits his threes, that is the perfect small forward to start. Because him, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen... Uh, this stat I just got from Alex Hoops, who just did a video on the Cavaliers. You should go watch it. It's a really good video. They are 10 points better defensively with those three on the floor than the average defense in the league. So, just to make that clear, 
they're basically the best defense in basketball with those three on the floor. Then if you can have a Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell out there, and Okoro is hitting his threes, let's say Evan Mobley is hitting his threes at a respectable rate, if they can have not awful spacing with those two guards out there and then have the best defense in basketball, the Cavaliers can be really damn good. Honestly, Isaac Okoro hitting his threes could be the difference between them contending or not. So he's absolutely their X factor. Um, Charlotte Hornets, when you're, once you're getting to the like bad teams, it's kind of hard to pick an X factor because it's like, you know, X factor for what are they trying to achieve necessarily. Uh, but I guess for the Charlotte Hornets, I'd have to go PJ Washington. I think he needs to step up offensively in the wake of losing Miles Bridges because Miles Bridges is a piece of shit human. And I assume no one is ever going to sign him, including the Hornets. Uh, the New York Knicks. I guess I gotta go Julius Randle. I mean, if what if he what if he just flipped around and was as good as he was two years ago instead of one? What if that just happened? That would be certainly something, um, and I'd be a little sad about it honestly because I want to see Obi Toppin become the starting power forward of the Knicks. Uh, but obviously, Julius Randle going back to All Star, I believe starter form was he an All Star starter? Either way, All Star form would be a bigger deal for the Knicks than that switch happening. But you know. Um, Washington Wizards, I, Porzingis, sure. Uh, Indiana Pacers, ugh. Is there anyone on the Pacers that we really care about that much outside of, um, outside of uh, Tyrese Halliburton? Long term, Jalen Smith is interesting, but I don't know that we care that much about him. Uh, Aaron Neesmith, I think. It, I don't think his potential should be given up on yet. Uh, I guess Aaron Neesmith as like a could swing in the opposite direction from where his career has been going, and that would be cool. Uh, for the Detroit Pistons, uh, Sadiq Bay taking a leap, I guess. Um, and for the Orlando Magic, uh, I think I guess I could really say any of the three of Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony, or um, Markel Fultz. Just one of those three guys breaking out would make a world of difference for the Magic. And I do think you have a real shot at at least one of them doing so. Cole Anthony kind of broke out last year. Marco Fultz has been much better with the Magic than he was with the Sixers. And Jalen Suggs was terrible offensively in his uh, rookie year. So either of those three guys takes another leap that would be absolutely massive for their respect for that uh for that team but yeah those are my x factors for the eastern conference thanks for watching this video and goodbye